Good evening, family in Christ, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. <clears throat> and so let's pray as we come to the end of another day and to give, a, give God thanks for his goodness and mercy to us this, this day, for bringing us through another day and for sustaining us with his all-sufficient grace. And of course, as we embark on this night, we ask for rest. We ask for peace. We ask that he will grant us that rest and peace we need in our souls, in our bodies, in our, in our minds. And uh, take away the anxieties and fears of our hearts and trust in him alone. So let's pray. <clears throat> o God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. <clears throat> that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. The canticle is taken from Ephesians chapter 1. The glorious grace of God is freely bestowed on us in the beloved. Blessed are you, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for you have blessed us in Christ Jesus with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You chose us to be yours in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before you. In love you predestined us for adoption as your children through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of your will, to the praise of your glorious grace, which you freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In you we have redemption through the blood of Christ, the forgiveness of our sins, according to the riches of your grace, which you have lavished upon us. You have made known to us in all wisdom and insight the mystery of your will, according to your purpose, which you set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The glorious grace of God is freely bestowed on us in the beloved. <clears throat> Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. 
trust in the Lord with all your heart. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. And our collect for this evening. <coughs> Kindle in our hearts, O God, the flame of love which never ceases, that it may burn in us, giving light to others. May we shine forever in your temple, set on fire with your eternal light, even your Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and our Redeemer. Amen. Come, my light, and illumine my darkness. Come, my life, and revive me from death. Come, my physician, and heal my wounds. Come, flame of divine love, and burn up the thorns of my sins, kindling my heart with the flame of your love. Come, my King. Sit upon the throne of my heart and reign there, for you alone are my King and my Lord. Amen. And our psalm this evening is psalm number 28. Psalm 28. Psalm 28, let's say the refrain first. The Lord is my strength and my shield. Amen. Hallelujah. To you I call, O Lord, my rock. Be not deaf to my cry, lest, I, lest if you do not hear me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my prayer when I cry out to you, when I lift up my hands to your holy of holies. Do not snatch me away with the wicked, with the evildoers, who speak peaceably with, with their neighbors while malice is in their hearts. Repay them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their devices. Reward them according to the work of their hands, and pay them their just deserts. They take no heed of the Lord's doings, nor of the works of his hands. Therefore shall he break them down and not build them up. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my prayer. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart has trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore my heart dances for joy and in my song will I praise him. The Lord is the strength of his people, a safe refuge for his anointed. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them and carry them forever. The Lord is my strength and my shield. And our prayer. Hear us, shepherd of your people. Forgive our sins, and in a world of pretenses, make us true in heart and mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And um, the meditation for that psalm, I'll read as well, for Psalm 28. David is desperate. Note the urgency of the first two verses of the psalm. We do not know the exact nature of his plight, but perhaps he's perplexed by not knowing who his true friends are. Perhaps he's discovering that he's on the 
receiving end of deceitfulness. How does David deal with this bewildering sense of helplessness and confusion? How do you deal with these realities? After all, David is not alone in such struggles. He faces them in, his, in ways unique to him and his time and culture. But the words of this psalm are the words of a heart struggle that transcends any particular cultural location. David responds by turning to God. Verse 7, the Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts and I am helped. David does not expend his energies engaging his enemies or defending himself or pursuing any other humanly contrived strategy. He receives the horizontal affliction but goes to a vertical solution. And is this a supernatural empty solution? Far from it. Verse 7, my heart exalts and with my song I give thanks to him. In David's descendant, we see why we too can trust in the Lord and with far more concrete reason. While David cried for God to be their shepherd and carry them forever, verse 9, the Lord Jesus Christ came as the final good shepherd and he carries his lambs in his arms. See John chapter 10. Amen. All right, let's leave that there. Lord, it's a good, good, good psalm to meditate on as a, the, the Lord is, the, the Lord is our shepherd. And we think of that famous uh, psalm, Psalm 23, when we think of God as our shepherd. Zechariah chapter 10 is our Old, Test our Old Testament reading this evening. Zechariah chapter 10. <clears throat> Ask the Lord for rain in the springtime. It is the Lord who sends the thunderstorms. He gives showers of rain to all people and plants of the field to anyone, to everyone. The idols speak deceitfully. Diviners see visions that lie. They tell dreams that are false. They give comfort in vain. Therefore the people wander like sheep, oppressed for lack of a shepherd. My anger burns against the shepherds, and I will punish the leaders. For the Lord Almighty will care for his flock, the people of Judah, and make them like a proud horse in battle. From Judah will come the cornerstone, from him the tent peg, from him the battle bow, from him every ruler. Together they will be like warriors in battle, trampling their enemy into the mud of the streets. They will fight because the Lord is with them and they will put the enemy horsemen to shame. I will strengthen Judah and save the tribes of, Jeru of Joseph. I will restore them because I have compassion on them. They will be as though I had not rejected them. For I am the Lord their God, and I will answer them. The Ephraimites will become like warriors, and their hearts will be glad as with wine. Their children will see it and be joyful. Their hearts will rejoice in the Lord. I will signal for them and gather them in. Surely I will redeem them. They will be as numerous as before. Though I scatter them among the peoples, yet in distant lands they will remember me. They and their children will survive and they will return. I will bring them back from Egypt and gather them from Assyria I will bring them to Gilead and, Le and Lebanon and there will be no room and there, and there will not be room enough for them. 
they will pass through the sea of trouble and the surging sea will be sub subdued and all the depths of the Nile will dry up. Assyria's pride will be brought down and Egypt's scepter will pass away. I will strengthen them in the Lord and in his name they will live securely, declares the Lord. Amen. That's the promise for Judah. But of course, as you know, as I've been saying uh, over and over again, that promise, these promises in the prophets are not just fulfilled in the physical uh, community, the physical geographical area called Judah or the people of Israel. Uh, the, these prophecies are fulfilled in Christ, who is the greater Israel and in his people, we, his church. And so when God says, I will strengthen them in the Lord and in his name, they will live securely. He's talking about us. He's talking about all of his people everywhere. And so we, God is, the promise is that God will restore his people. God will bring them, um, bring them back again. God will, God will um, bring revival. God will um, bring prosperity and abundance again. And the peoples will, the peoples of the other nations, the peoples of the world will marvel at the, at the amazing grace of God to his people. Amen. Let's leave that there. Let's move to our New Testament reading, which is Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11 from verse 1 to 11. <clears throat> As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If someone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and, and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the this, is this coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. All right, so this reading uh, is, our, is, what, is what we call the Palm Sunday reading. It is... Uh, this begins the week, or uh, what we call Holy Week in, our ch in the church. It's the, the week, that final week of Jesus. So Mark's gospel uh, starts the final week of Jesus here in chapter 11 and will continue to the very end of Mark. And so what, what's the significance? Well, uh, I mean, there are lots we can draw out of this story, of course, um, of Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a, on a borrowed donkey. You know, it's important that the only place, the only time in Scripture we are told that Jesus rode on a donkey um, is here. And in fact, it was not even his own donkey. It was borrowed. You know, we are told that it, 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 the, they are to go and find this donkey, um, bring it, and if somebody asks, tell them we'll bring it back shortly. 
the Lord needs it, we'll bring it back shortly. And it's a, it, that, that, that's a powerful image, sisters and brothers, because it reminds us that our Lord, you know, wasn't, when he walked this earth, he was not, he, he didn't live among the rich and the wealthy. He lived among the poor and, 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 and the downtrodden and the destitute. Uh, I mean, you know, people, people don't realize how, how much of that is significant for the story of Jesus. I mean, and even though some of his disciples were well off, I mean, Matthew was well off because he was a the tax collector. Said Jesus himself um, did not even uh, nowhere didn't even own a donkey to ride into Jerusalem, much less anything else for that matter. Um, wherever they went, they walked. They traveled by boat. And some of the fishermen had boats, and they traveled in boats, and they, they, they walked and ministered. But here, he's riding a donkey, a borrowed donkey at that, and the donkey, uh, and as, as, he, as he rode into Jerusalem, he, he gets the, 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 the believers, the, the, the people in Jerusalem, those who followed, the disciples ahead, and those who followed started shouting, Hosanna, which is a save us comes from comes from psalm, the psalm psalm 118 save us save us lord um blessed is the one who comes in the name of the lord all of these psalms messianic psalms psalms that apply that are that, that that speak of a coming king these people are applying these psalms to jesus and and and, and that is significant because jesus doesn't say don't do this i'm not that one of course he is he is the coming king. He is the prophesied king that is to come. The one who comes in the name of the Lord. The one who comes in the, uh, uh, in the lineage of David, the king. And so this is the one. This is the one. And he's riding in on a donkey. Now, kings don't ride donkeys. Kings ride steeds. They ride magnificent horses. But yet, this king is coming riding on a donkey which tells us a lot about him as a king he's not a he's not a haughty king he's a humble king he's not a king that owns that 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 that, that shows off his his wealth and his and and, and just to say uh, uh, jesus owns the whole universe of course <laughs> but on earth he owned nothing you know and and this 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 the symbol of poverty of humility uh, and so on that 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 he's showing right here at the beginning of holy week is 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 powerful symbol to remind us sisters and brothers that the kingdom of god is about humility it's not about extravagance it's about riding it's about a king who comes in in hum with a humble disposition in poverty, in 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 the sense of, of someone who doesn't um, who doesn't riding with victoriously, but someone who comes in, frankly, with the attitude to be killed. I mean, you know, everything here is setting the stage for his death, because. Uh, he comes in and people are crying out you are the one to come you are the messiah you are you are the one that we we we've been waiting for and uh, people are not going to like that in the other gospel i think it's, it's in luke's gospel the pharisees says tell them to stop talking like this this is this is blasphemous don't tell your disciples to stop speaking like this and jesus said if they remain quiet the stones will cry out now, Mark doesn't give us that detail, but the point is, is that this kind of talk can get you in trouble, Jesus. And of course, he knows it, but this is his time. This is his hour. And so we have a king, sisters and brothers, who is humble and lowly, riding a, a, a donkey. And he comes in humility. Uh, because it's as, a, as, a, as a symbol of a servant, because he's setting an example for us as well. 
that remember he said before in a, a chapter before in Mark's gospel, anyone who wants to be great must become the least of all. Those who want to, 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 to become first must become last. They must become servant of all. And he is showing this in his example. And this is one of those examples that he gives us. So we must have this same attitude in us as Christ. An attitude of humility, a humble attitude, that no matter what we have, no matter how rich or poor we have, we must always display a sense of humility and humbleness in the kingdom of God. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father and God, we thank you for bringing us to the end of another day. We are grateful, O oh God, for your grace. You have sustained us through this day, and we thank you. We pray that as we come to the end of this day, that you will give us the rest and the peace we need for tonight. As we sleep, we ask that you will give us rest so that we, by your grace, will be refreshed when we awake in the morning. And so Lord, we pray for each other. We pray as, a, as, as we continue, as I prayed, we're praying for uh, two surgeries this week. Um, for my wife, Hillary, who's, who's going to surgery tomorrow. And for Pauline's mom, Daphne, who will be having surgery on Wednesday. And so Lord, we pray for these two, uh, two of your children, who are who are um, going who's going through this this surgery tomorrow and Wednesday, Lord? We ask for the your divine arm to to your supernatural arm to uh, to intervene in their situation and and bring healing and wholeness to their bodies. We pray, oh God, we ask, Lord that you will use the doctors, use the surgeons, use the, the medical practitioners as your instrument in, in bringing wholeness and healing and health and complete healing to Hillary and to Daphne, our sisters. And so Lord, we, we, we commit their, their lives to you, we commit their situation to you and and so lord we pray that you will be there as the the, the help in need that uh, that we need for them at this time and so lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray for others who are who are not well tonight we continue to remember our sister hannah in the hospital God, we pray for strength for her. We pray, Lord, that uh, you again use the medical practitioners, the doctors, the nurses, and those who are entrusted to her care to help her to, 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 to be nursed back to health, we pray, so that she will be whole again, well enough to return home. Lord, we pray for her. We pray for our brother David as he awaits his own treatment. Uh, and Lord, we pray that that will be soon, that this, this will, there will be a sense of urgency in, in the doctors and the, in the NHS for, for, his, for, his, medical, uh, for, for, for his medical attention, uh, whatever it needs to be for him to be made whole again. And so, Lord, we pray for these and um, others on our hearts. We pray for the family in Fort Lauderdale who asked for us to pray for them. We ask for your mercy upon them. We ask for your grace upon that family, that you will sustain them in their going out and their coming in. And may they find their peace and rest in you, their strength in you each day. And so, Lord, we pray for those who are traveling. We remember our sister Angela, who's returning from America after, after saying farewell to her mom. 
we pray for her and the rest of the family as as they as they move into the future without uh, that special person in their lives and so pray for strength for angela and others who are mourning the passing of a loved one this week we remember those who who, who remember the anniversary of a loved one we think of grace and her daughter, Ogi, who passed away many years now. I think it was last week. And so, Lord, we pray for Grace and Tizia as they remember and reflect on the life of Ogi. And so, Lord, we bring all this to you tonight, and we pray that you will sustain us and, and keep us and strengthen us for the journey ahead. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest upon your eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you peace and rest tonight, sisters and brothers. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, sisters and brothers.